All right, so this will be part two of our uh, two-week section on uh, flash photography or supplemental light photography. And uh, so this week we're going to talk about a couple different uh, skills specifically. And one of them, the first one will be oblique lighting. So oblique lighting, if you remember, we talked a little bit about this in the Intro to Forensic Science class. So in oblique lighting, what we're doing is we're taking a light source, whether it's the external flash unit or a flashlight, and we're holding it off to the side so the light shines across of an object. So you can kind of see in the illustration here, we've got a light source coming off to the side, it's shining across the object, and the camera's looking directly at the object. So uh, while this image is not exactly set up properly for taking an impression, uh, a footwear impression photo, uh, what you can see here is the flashlight shining across the floor, and this footprint in the dust is clearly visible, and we can uh, see all the details we're looking for. So more of a practical app, application setting this up properly what we have here is now using oblique lighting where we have a shoe print and some snow and the flash directing down into it it's obscuring it hard to really see any details so trying some different options with oblique lighting and what we end up with is you know a little too dark here uh, with shadows and but this way you know with the light source coming across it uh, we're getting in kind of a nice little detail uh, so, you know, sometimes you got to kind of play around with the oblique lighting. Maybe one or two flashlights uh, are needed so that uh, you don't create, cast such a heavy shadow or a flashlight and your external flash unit. Just again, some, some examples here. Uh, again, showing a shoe print. Um, indented writing is, is kind of a cool thing you can do, you know, where you have a note that's been written. When we talk about like suicide scenes, oftentimes suicide notes are not found at our suicide scenes, but a piece of paper or a notepad will be found. And you might notice that, hey, there's something something written on here. Uh, of course, you know, the, the old cliche is you take like a, a pencil sideways or a crayon sideways and you rub on it and you can read the writing. Well, before we go and affect it with, you know, scribbling on it, something that we can do is use oblique lighting and we can get our uh, information to show up. And then, you know, we can collect the paper. And if we have to do the, the sideways pencil or the sideways crayon thing later on, we can. But, you know, in our first go around, with the oblique lighting, we've got that image shown. So just kind of, you know, a thing to remember uh, from time to time to get really good imagery of oblique lighting. Sometimes we have to move the flashlight. So uh, it might be multiple flashlights or it might be the fact that we use a longer shutter speed and we actually move the flashlight so we don't get just one big hot spot. So that's kind of what you have, you know, going on uh, here versus where you have the hot spot here. Again, move the flashlight. All right. So uh, something else that uh, we can do with our oblique lighting is making bite marks visible. I'm a little leery uh, about talking about bite marks right now. There's some controversy within the scientific community about the validity of bite mark evidence and the ability of our forensic odontologists to accurately say who bit who. But still, even though there is some, some controversy over bite mark evidence as a whole, I would still say, you know, collect this, take photographs of it. If nothing else, you're proving that somebody was injured. Well, we're trying to prove, you know, how do we know somebody felt pain? You know, you take a picture of a bruise. Anybody who's felt pain or gotten a bruise will know what that pain is. Uh, so even if you've never been bit, if you see the bruising here, you see the tissue damage, you see some blood running down, I would think most jurors would look at this picture and agree, yeah, this person felt some pain. So uh, I would still collect these, even though there's that scientific question about the validity of bite mark evidence. All right, next skill, bounce flash. So uh, traditionally bounce flash, we're looking at the idea of taking and bouncing the flash off of something like the ceiling, uh, helping to diffuse the lighting, and it also helps reduce shadows. So just some examples here, where we've got the direct flash and the bounce flash look, you know, Yoda doesn't uh, have a shadow in this picture. In this picture, Yoda's got a pretty bad shadow. Shadows aren't bad CSI work per se, but we do want to minimize them if possible. So again, you know, taking like a portrait of a person where, uh, you know, we've got red eye reduction going on. So the person, you know, or a red eye uh, software has removed this red eye here. So the direct flash, it's like, bam, um, trying and, and doing some different bounce flashing. You notice this way where the light was pointing off the sidewall, bouncing into his face. One half of his face is a shadow. One of the half of his face looks right. But now if we bounce it off the ceiling, a little bit more natural looking. A little bit of a shadow, but it actually kind of creates some interest from an artistic standpoint. I'm showing this more from the standpoint of, okay, so you go to the hospital and say this kid has a black eye. 
you know, if we shoot the flash right into this kid's face, you're going to wash out his face, the black eye is going to be minimized. If we bounce the flash off the ceiling, bang, down, now suddenly his face is not washed out and that bruise from his black eye is going to look natural. So that is one of the areas where a bounce flash can come in handy. One of the things that we can do also, you know, in CSI, we like the little Yoda guy, we want to minimize shadows and stuff like that. So uh, some other things that we can do with bounce flashing is we can take and, and use like a piece of paper uh, and rubber band it to your flash. Uh, some flashes actually come with a bounce flash, a little card that pulls up. So you can create a bounce flash. Uh, with your pop-up flashes, you can kind of create a bounce flash also. Or you put a piece of paper and tape it in there, boom, shoot the light off at an angle. Helps again with diffusing the light and uh, minimizing some shadows if you're taking pictures of objects. Uh, and again, you know, a really good practical application for the bounce flash. You know, in portrait photography, it's used to make uh, people, you know, have less shadows, uh, give, give them a better look. So we're not taking pictures of portraits, but, you know, when you've got a bruise on a face or you've got an injury, you know, from a punch or something, uh, we can actually kind of show that face a little better with the bounce flash versus that, bam, you know, flash right in your face. Alrighty, so uh, last skill. Uh, I'm not going to speak a lot, a lot about this skill because I've got two additional videos. I'm going to have you watch those videos uh, to speak about the skill much more in depth. But it's something called painting with light. Now, your assignment for this week is going to be doing a painting with light exercise. I'm going to warn you. This is what we're looking at right now. If you Google painting with light, this is a regular artistic way of painting with light. This is not CSI work. This is beauty art. We're here to learn about forensics and CSI, not art and beauty. So uh, if anybody turns in an assignment where they've created wings on a friend or, or some sort of, uh, you know, image where you're shooting laser beams or, or thunderbolts or magic, whatever, um, that's not the purpose of this assignment. The purpose of this assignment is this, where you have a dark crime scene and it is impossible with the flash on your camera to light that crime scene up. So what you do is you take and you set your camera up on a tripod. You leave the shutter open for, you know, uh, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, a full minute, just depends on the situation. And you use a flashlight and you literally take your flashlight and you you know, paint in the scene with your flashlight. So uh, this is actually a, a image taken right out of one of the videos you're going to see today, uh, later, uh, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, I don't know, whenever you watch it, but uh, that you're going to see where uh, this barn, this is taken on a, on a night where there's basically moonless, there's a couple stars out, yes, as dark as can be. And so the artist, uh, you know, sets up this, this tripod, opens up his camera shutter, and then sets with a flashlight and kind of paints in the outline of the barn, uh, paints in some of the tree branches, some of the background trees, obviously the trees way back in the background, gone. And this is more, you know, like a, a crime scene look. Imagine that if we had uh, something happen on this, this bridge. And so what you have here is, you know, a pedestrian bridge, kind of like the trestle trail uh, kind of thing down there in Nina. And so imagine if you had some event happen on this, there's not a lot of lights out here and you can see nothing out in the sky. If it's three in the morning and we have to process the scene, we have to process it so we can set our camera to up. And now, you know, we just take and shine the flashlight around. And sometimes you gotta walk around the scene a little bit. So, you know, I'm gonna ask you to experiment. The, uh, the, the assignment is to take six different photos using painting with light. So what you're gonna do is, you know, set your camera up, put it on a tripod, open up the shutter. If you don't have access to a camera and a tripod, you can use your cell phone. And uh, with your cell phone, just put, put your phone into fireworks mode. Um, you know, the other thing you can do is uh, kind of look and see if you've got uh, the settings in your camera where you can actually, you know, have your camera, um, you know, with shutter speed and stuff. You just have to go through the settings and the menus in your camera to figure out what your camera can and can't do. If your cell phone doesn't allow you to go into different modes like fireworks mode or do any of those settings, check out the App Store whether you're Google or iPhone, there are plenty of free apps actually for your phone that will allow you, uh, you know, just, just search for, um, you know, SLR camera app or manual camera app. Uh, you can download an app, take, read the reviews, please. Uh, you know, I'm not going to suggest any one. I've, I've tried out a couple of them. You know, some are per, pretty good. Some are pretty okay. They're, they're all decent, you know, but, but really read the reviews because there's a couple, you know, that do have like ads and stuff involved. And, you know, I don't want to, you know, chalk your phone up with any of that garbage. Um, but, you know, that's another option for you is to download one of those free manual camera apps and, you know, leave your, you can set it up, you know, not need a tripod then just, you know, balance your camera on something so it stays standing. 
click the button so that it's going for you know 10 15 30 seconds and uh, try some different timings out try you know five seconds try 10 seconds try 15 seconds try 30 seconds see what works for you uh, play with your flashlight see how long you know you need to paint things in do you have to move quickly or, or move slowly but try and get some really good good images. You know, I always suggest go out in your backyard, put like one or two objects out in the backyard. So, you know, like a lawn chair and, you know, something else, um, you know, large objects, not, not small stuff. And paint it in. Uh, don't use people in that. People move around. It's, it's kind of difficult that you end up with blurry images because a person's sitting there waiting to be painted in and they kind of move a little bit and then they move a little bit. So they get painted into two places. The next thing you got a two-headed person. Um, so, you know, we're, we're working on CSI work, so we're working on, on things that are still and not moving. Uh, and yes, we could potentially use painting with light on a dead body, but when you, anytime we have friends, uh, anytime we've had students use friends as, as mannequins, they always move and it ends up with blurry pictures and it just distracts. But uh, the idea here is, is, you know, get your camera set up, have a long exposure picture, you know, and uh, take and use a flashlight to light up the scene and see what you get. And, uh, you know, try this a, a couple dozen times and, and give me the six um, best photos you get. And let's see what you get. All right. So uh, that is what we have for this week. Um, just, you know, some, some specific skills related to the process of using flashes and uh, some specific skills for evidence collection, you know, using the oblique lighting, the bounce flash, and the painting with light. A couple other ones that are mentioned in the book and whatnot, but uh, these are kind of the top three. So if anybody has any questions, as always, shoot me an email. Give me a phone call, stop up to the Public Safety Training Center and see me during my office hours. Otherwise, I will talk with you all next week.